Facebook Live. I'm Marsha Boswell with Kansas Wheat. And right now we are in Ottawa County, Kansas. And we are here with Joe and Gina Kerr, who farm in uh, Saline County, Ottawa County, and a little bit in McPherson. So uh, Joe, could you tell us a little bit about this field that, that you're harvesting right now? Yeah, so this field's about 200 acres. It was in corn last year, and after the corn was harvested, we planted it to wheat. Uh, the variety here is Everest, and uh, we would have put fungicide on this field. And uh, anyway, it's uh, it went this year from a real dry year to a real wet year, and so we're glad we put the fungicide on. And and why would you apply a fungicide? What does that do to help the crop? Well, so when it's damp like that, there's uh, rust becomes an issue, which kind of can basically kill, kill the flag leaf. And uh, if that happens, then you get uh, the head doesn't feel right. You have low test weights and other issues. So, uh, yeah, that's why we would do that. Okay, and and Everest is a, a variety that was developed by Kansas State University. Um, it's marketed through Kansas Wheat Alliance. So can you tell me a little bit about how you chose that variety for this location and what goes into choosing varieties? Yeah, so um, we've, I mean, we've planted a fair amount of Everest over the last several years. So it, it's kind of had a proven track record for us. And so it was just one that we were going to pick uh, a little bit, it was the seed that you could get also in last year, um, but in the end, it was—it's it, just been a good variety for us. Do you typically plant the same variety on all your acres, or do you uh, mix that up a little bit? Oh, we change that a little bit every year. We'll plant, uh, you know, probably at least three or four different varieties. Okay, and um, what what different? things do you look at when you're choosing those varieties? Um, is there a, a book you look at or? Yeah, so we'll, you'll look at kind of the last years or the, the year you're in, uh, yield report from County Extension and, and other places to kind of see uh, what has done well and what hasn't. And in some cases you wanna look several years back just to make sure that it wasn't a fluke that year that it did good, that it's it's had a history of being good. So how is Everest comparing this year on this uh, on this field to maybe whatever you had on this field last year? And what what different changes were there in the growing conditions from last year to this year? Yeah, actually, well, yeah, so this year again was corn right before this, so it wouldn't have been in wheat. Uh, strangely enough, the last two years here were about the same. We went kind of uh, late winter was dry and uh, early spring turned off wet. Just about when you thought the crop was dead, it starts raining. And uh, so we had a real wet period there. And now it's turned off dry again. And today was in the low 100s. So I guess we got the harvest weather to finish it up. So what kind of moisture levels are you seeing on the crop that you're cutting? Yeah, so currently the loads going in have been a lot in the probably 9 to 11 moisture, which for us is real dry. Um, up to about, oh, the middle of, well, the beginning of the week, there, um, there were still some fields we had a little bit moisture. I mean, the grain hadn't quite dried down yet, which is kind of hard to believe with this kind of temperature. But now it seems like it's all dry and, and uh, we're able to just uh, cut through any field we come to. So how long does it take you from when you start cutting wheat until you're done cutting wheat, usually? Well, uh, you know, 10 days, two weeks okay, is and probably a common amount. And we can see in this field right now you're running four combines. So do you do that typically throughout harvest? Yeah, it'll. we try to yeah, run all four through the harvest. Um, this year it, it was 
maybe a little longer harvest because we started out and we'd find one field that was real dry and then you would find another field right next to it that was still too wet so you couldn't harvest that one. So you'd go looking and find a field that was a ways off that was dry and so we did a lot of driving Moving on the roads. Around. Yeah, which has taken a little extra time this year. So, uh, like I mentioned, there, there are four combines and a couple of grain carts and some semis here at this field. Um, who are, are the people that are running those, that equipment? Is that people you've hired, or can you talk a little bit about who all helps you during harvest? Yeah, so uh, family is a big part of the harvest, and, and it's just something that you kind of um, look forward to, even those that aren't always here on the farm on a daily basis they'll show up to help out for you know the harvest uh, on the combine specifically i have uh, my son who which we have three kids so the middle one's a son and he's actually came back and farming and he's running one today and then two of my daughters are running two of them and then a brother is running the fourth one so that really is a, a family operation that you've got going on there. And um, can you tell us a little bit about your family's history with the farm? Um, yeah, the combine's a little bit loud right here, but uh, can you just... <laughs> can you tell us, you know, is this something that your family's been involved in for a long time? Yeah, so... My grandpa would have started farming in the Dorrance Wilson area, and so I guess you would say you know, we're kind of the fourth generation farm, and uh, we we actually live in the home that I grew up in, and uh, so yeah, definitely it's a family operation, and and uh, um, yeah, ha has been a history of our family farming. So Gina, can you talk a little bit about what your role is during harvest and, and during the rest of the year? Well, during wheat harvest, um, I definitely get to be one of those gopher people um, and help move field to field and pull a header. But also my big role is to help get the guys fed at night. Um, they We pack a cooler for lunch for noon and then try and have supper out to the field in between six and seven and then trade off and keep those machines rolling so we can get the harvest in. And I think we probably, counting the fifth generation of our generation farm, we feed about 20 people a night and rotate them through to get everyone fed and back out onto their equipment to keep rolling. Um, so then also when we're trading out, I shift out the grain cart drivers so they get to eat and so I guess that's part of my role while while harvest is going on in wheat harvest. And today you guys uh, did have a, an international group that was here visiting your farm and uh, riding in the combine and, and all that. Can you talk a little bit about the different groups that have been out to your farm and why you feel it's important to host groups like that? It is fun to have a lot of different people out. Today it was the inter, uh, inter, International Grains program. program. So they were here and so that represented South Africa and Nigeria were the people, the, the people that came today. Um, last year though, we had the National Festival of Breads come to our farm and they got to usually get to come out to the harvest field. Last year it was wet and so they, we showed some pictures, but they got to see our equipment and um, you know, just get to be a part of hearing the story and know that farming really is a family affair. Um, last year we also had the grains program come, the milling program come out to the field. And we also had a Congo um, connection come out last year. So we just really try and tell the farm story to help others understand what hard work we put into it and hope that they appreciate all of that and know that yeah, we care about what we're doing and um, we try and make everything safe for the consumers. And it's just to tell the story. Thanks. Um, you mentioned, we mentioned 
Should I just wait a minute here while this combine passes us? Because it's pretty loud. Okay, we mentioned that you used a fungicide on this, uh, on this field right here. But also, um, do you do you use pesticides or herbicides or any other kind of chemicals on your fields? And if you do, can you tell us why you choose to use chemicals? And also, how you know that that chemical is not in the food that is sent to the elevator or the grain that's sent to the elevator? Yeah, so uh, we will put uh, some chemical on to keep the fields clean so that we're not sending weeds and other contaminants like that to the elevator. Um, we would do that by the label so it's kind of an approved process and we follow those approval processes. Uh, and most definitely we want to have a safe product. I mean, it's something we're passionate about. Uh, we eat the food. We care about what we're doing and and uh, again we uh, are cautious about how we go about that okay great if anybody has any questions feel free to ask we saw someone earlier ask where we are and yet again we are in uh, Ottawa County uh, so feel free to ask any questions if you've got any for a farmer and we have also just gotten a couple of comments that I'll share with you guys um, Tarian Yo Yao would like to ride in a combine, so maybe they can come out to the field sometime. Um, and then a hello from Bonner's Ferry in Idaho. So okay. somebody in Idaho watching. Um, so. Well, following up on that, we're glad to give rides. We were harvesting north of Salina the other day, and some different individuals were taking pictures, and and one was taking pictures for a while, and. Uh, so my son went over and talked to him and asked, hey, do you want to ride in a combine? He said, yeah, I'd like to do that. So he hopped in with me and rode for about an hour there, and we talked about uh, wheat harvesting. He uh, helped a farmer in his younger years, you know, a long time ago. And uh, so it was kind of fun to be able to help share the story, how what's the same and what's changed in agriculture there. That's great. I'm glad they, they he went up and talked to him and they got that opportunity. A funnier story. You can tell. About. Well, about a night before that night, um, there was another group kind of taking some pictures, and I stopped and talked to the young mom, and I said, well, would you like me to take you out in the field so you can get better pictures? And she goes, that would be great. And she had like a four-year-old son in the car, and I go, would he like to ride in the combine? And she goes, oh, I bet he would love it. And so I put him in with our daughter, Michelle, and the first thing out of his mouth when he got in with Michelle is, best day ever. <laughs> So it's fun to share our story with other people. Yeah, that's great. We, uh, the, the combine is kind of rolling by, so it might be a little bit hard to hear, but we did have a question. How do you get the line so straight in the field? Yeah, so um, the bottom line is GPS. We're using auto steer in the combines. Uh, the technology helps us be the most efficient we can be, you know, uh, taking a full swath all the time and uh, just the accuracy we like about that it brings to the table. And, and yeah, we, we will plant with the GPS, so we're using that when we plant. We're using that when we, uh, you know, when we spray the fields, putting fertilizer on, and, and it helps us be more accurate in all parts of the operation. You want to talk a little bit about some other crops that you plant as well throughout the year? Yeah, so we'll, um, we're a no-till operation, and so we, uh, we will plant wheat, and then we will plant, um, so that's, you know, our summer harvest here. In the spring, we will plant corn, uh, soybeans, sorghum or milo, might call it and we so we have that kind of in our rotation all right well i think our uh, battery on the drone is getting a little bit low so i think we are gonna have to uh gonna have to bring it back home but thank you so much to the cares for joining us today and thanks for watching 
Um, and if, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave some in the comments uh, and we will definitely monitor those and, and get back to you. Thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.